All right, welcome back, happy today. Today we're gonna to be talking about toxicology, a personal favorite topic of mine. So what is toxicology? The study of adverse effects of chemical substances on living organisms. I'm not going to make you memorize that, just get the gist of it. It's how chemicals affect living things. So something to address, the difference between toxin, poison, and venom. Uh, technically, toxin is naturally formed. Poison is absorbed, such as being ingested, inhaled, or touched. And venom is injected. That said, these are all used pretty interchangeably. I could do a whole other video on how it's linguistically wrong and how there's lexical gaps and no one cares. Use whatever you want. A toxic substance in general may cause death, contribute to death, impair judgment, or explain behavior. But basically, don't be this guy. So the first aspect of toxicology we're going to talk about is the dose. Favorite quote of mine from a favorite person of mine, Paracelsus. It's from this quote that the phrase, the dose makes the poison, comes from. Basically, everything is toxic to some degree. It just depends on how much of it you have. The LD50 is what a lot of people think of, well, it literally stands for lethal dose 50. So you might think, ah, that's the dose it takes to kill you. Kind of, but not quite. That's where the 50 comes in. The, it literally stands for lethal dose of 50% of the population. It's expressed in milligrams per kilogram. To explain that a bit further, say we have a sample population of six. Hopefully your sample population is a couple orders of magnitude bigger than this. They're gonna be all different people, different weights, different sizes, different histories. Other things that can affect susceptibility are interactions. Maybe they already have some drug in their system that would interact with this. Uh, previous exposure, they may have built up kind of an immunity, some things you can do that with, some things you can't. But the same LD50 will work for all these people because again, it's expressed in milligrams per kilogram. So not every person would receive the same dose. It would depend on how much they weigh. So statistically, the LD50 will kill half of the sample population. So roughly the LD50 has a 50% chance of killing any given person. Some rough example dosages, I'm not gonna make you memorize this table, but this is something you can look back to if you see, hmm, this says that the toxicity that's LD50 is 27 milligrams per kilogram. What does that mean? That means for a 150 pound person, it might take about half a teaspoon to get to the LD50, though which is they have a 50% chance of dying. That's not the completely lethal dose. All right, the substance itself. Now we know everything can kill us if you have the right dose. There's different categories. The categories I'm about to explain are arbitrary because if you just Google types of poison, you will get all sorts of different lists and they all say different things. Uh, it just depends on how specific you wanna get. I'm going to be very general and just point out a few for the sake of this class. Corrosives. Uh, these are anything that can cause a chemical burn. We've discussed chemical burns already on the types of burn presentation. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, that'll be up soon. It's often a strong acid or a strong base, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. You can see the little image, it's eating through hand, it's eating through something that's not a hand. It, it just, it dissolves things. This symbol with the weird looking star thing on the chest is really anything that can affect DNA. Uh, and it can cover three different categories. Carcinogen means that it causes cancer or is very likely to. A mutagen 
causes mutations. So again, it alters your DNA, and next time those cells reproduce, it does it wrong. Teratogens are a type of mutagen, you can say, but it specifically causes mutations in offspring. So this would be something that pregnant women would specifically want to avoid. Uh, you don't want it interfering with your gametes. So it might not hurt you personally, but it will hurt your future children. This label, poison, that's really, really vague. There's a lot of different things that can fall under that. Three that I'm gonna talk about today, there's hemotoxin, hemo means blood. So this is something that messes with your blood. Uh, snake venom is often hemotoxic. Search YouTube for a video of rattlesnake venom and you'll see this terrifying image of a bowl of blood turning into basically jello. It solidifies the blood so it can't flow anymore and that's scary, uh, but that's hemotoxin. Neurotoxin affects the nervous system. That will be your organophosphates, pyrethrins. So a lot of pesticides are types of neurotoxins. Uh, so things used to kill bugs. Cytotoxin, cyto means cell. And this basically means it disrupts cell function, which if you think about it is also really vague because every living thing is made of cells. So that, if you ask me, is kind of like the other category. All right, mode of introduction. This is how a substance gets into the body. So oral, through your mouth. This is from eating, drinking, somehow ingesting something. Topical, this is absorbed through the skin. Think of, let's see, mercury can be absorbed through the skin. It's not the only way it can be absorbed, but that's one way. Someone could think of a poison lotion. You rub it on your skin and it soaks in. And I've never actually heard of someone poisoning lotion, but in theory, you could do it depending on the substance. Inhaled, this is something you breathe in. So different smokes and gases and fumes and vapors. Think of all those lovely things. Subcutaneous, this is just under the skin. So this is a type of injection. Think of a flu shot. These typically have a very short needle. It doesn't go all the way into the muscle. It just goes a little bit under the skin. Intramuscular, another type of injection, this goes all the way into the muscle, has a longer needle. Um, these two would also apply to spider and snake bites. Uh, I don't think a spider is ever gonna get intramuscular, but a snake might. Intravenous, this is going directly into a vein. Think heroin or when you're in the hospital getting fluids, if someone were to tamper with the IV bag. That's going to work much quicker than almost any of the above modes of introduction. Intravenous things tend to affect things very, very quickly. History of exposure. Uh, this is broken down into two words, acute and chronic. There's a common misconception that acute means not that bad and chronic means really bad. And really it has nothing at all to do with severity. Acute simply means that there's been a single exposure or multiple exposures in less than 24 hours. But generally it's one dose this is what the LD50 is based off of, is you give your population a single dose and that one dose is enough to hurt someone or kill someone. Chronic means multiple exposures over time. So these are sublethal doses given a little bit at a time. Think of that case where a wife was slowly poisoning her husband by putting a little bit of, I think it was lead, like some kind of lead salt into his banana pudding. And he ended up hospitalized after a while and eventually died because she kept bringing the poisoned pudding into the hospital room because he just really loved banana pudding. But that took like months to do with a little bit of exposure every day. 
So chronic just means over time and acute means one and done. All right, that's it for this video. There will be a second video on pathology of specific different poisons. I can't even say they're most common or worse, or there's just kind of a handful that I know about and can easily find information about. So that'll be video two. If you're on YouTube, smash that like button, subscribe if you want more. Back me on Patreon. I'm kidding, I don't have a Patreon. And I will see you next time.